So I'm, so I'm here with uh, Dave Hughes, Skip Morris, Rick Hayfley, Hook Now, and we're here to talk about some things to do when trout are really fussy. And can you define fussy? Fussy is, you know they're there, you might even see them feeding, but you're just not catching them. So in other words, the trout are feeding, uh, they're active, but you can't turn them. You, you can't, can't turn them. them. They're yeah. not. They're not. They're not uh, cooperating. I Believe me. To find here, here's on the Big Hole River, and we're experiencing fussy trout that's, at the that's, moment. That's true. That's true. <laughs> and so we're uh, speaking from near experience. That's yeah. right. Yeah, they've been changing their mind at least every day. Yeah, definitely. If not every couple hours. So there's there's a number of things. Um, to keep in mind and you can kind of work through when you run into situations which is frequent when trout are not cooperating and they're real fussy. I know Skip you've mentioned a couple of to me already. What uh, what do you like to do? Well, um, you know, I think we should go through the conventional ones because mine's really Okay, odd. Skip's out there in left field. And it really works. And real, we'll, we'll leave Skip for last. Yeah, I think you should. So Dave, uh, you mentioned several things that... Yeah, well, fussy trout, you assume you're fishing in a hatch and they're not as fussy. So let's assume you're seeing an insect. The first thing I like to do is make sure the fly pattern has the posture on the water of the insect. Size, form, color, all that's important. But when you're fishing the fly on the water, from your distance, make sure it's floating the way a natural would. It looks perfect in your hand, gets out there and it's a parachute and flops on its side, it won't work. So look at the posture of the fly on the water. Add three feet of tippet, whatever size is appropriate. Nip it back. Amen. Add three feet of 5x, 6x, 7x if you have to, but really pay attention to your tippet. Make sure it hasn't been shortened. Why do you want that long tippet, Dave? Because I want the freedom of the float for the fly. Lots yeah. of freedom. Yep. To avoid that drag. Avoid drag. And three then feet. The That's main, my main thing might be to look at your position. If you're in fussy trout, you're fishing upstream, well, you're probably defeating yourself because you're showing them the line and the leader and before they see the fly. So maybe the first thing, after you do those other two things, the third thing is to look at your position, get into position to make a reach cast or a downstream vertical cast. And I've, I've got two things that I always keep in mind too with fussy trout is one is the size of the fly. I usually go down in size if I'm not having any luck with what I'm using. And as Dave said, make sure the posture of the fly is right on the water. But if they're getting short takes or refusals, go down in size. Uh, even if that means going from a 20 to a 22, sometimes that can make a big difference yeah. with fussy trout. And that's true with nymph fishing too. If I'm nymph fishing, and of course you're not seeing rising fish then, but if I'm not having success nymph fishing, I'll go down in size in my nymph patterns and sometimes that'll make a big difference. Um, and then if you're not sure what's on the water, that's really important because how do you know what fly size and pattern to put on if you aren't sure what they're actually taking? if you're seeing rises. So put a little uh, aquarium net out there to strain the current. I love to have a pair of binoculars with me. I've mentioned this before in many of my DVDs. Look out over the water with a pair of binoculars and you'll be amazed at what you see on the water when you look with binoculars that you're not seeing with your eyes. Uh, just the other night, we saw you know a few bugs flying we put binoculars up there and you just see bugs just all over the water and so that can really solve a lot of questions about what the fish might be taking just remember when you see the insects in your binoculars you're seeing them much bigger than they really are so when they look like a 12 they're really a 16. so skip what's your uh, your far out uh, approaches here uh, well, the first thing i'd like to say is i agree with dave my tippets have been getting longer and longer as i fish more for difficult trout because that longer tippet, you know, it drops in coils and it tends to give you that longer natural drift, which can be absolutely critical. If that fly drags the least bit and that trout's been around the block, it's over with a dry fly or an emerger. Um, and what did you say? Oh, <laughs> I agree with Rick both on-, on He agrees with me. Going Holy. to a smaller fly. Glad we got this on film. Because a lot of times that's turned the trick with me, but I also agree, get a sample if you possibly can and hold it right up next to your fly, because a lot of times you'll find that your fly is really not right. It's too big, usually. Um, but the, the one I was going to talk about is just the, the bizarro world approach. <laughs> 
And that means that if all that stuff doesn't work, because that's the stuff I do first, is try to imitate the hatch, figure out what the hatch is, if there's a hatch. But if that stuff doesn't work, I do crazy stuff. I start trying insane things, and, and I'll throw a, a, you know, a bizarro streamer into a spring creek, which is kind of, you know, you can about get arrested for that, but I've caught some really nice fish that way. Um, I've, I've, you know, again on spring creeks, I've thrown great big dry flies and twitched them all over the place and had the trout jump on them when they wouldn't touch a, you know, when they'd refuse a size 22 midge pupa just under the surface. So you were arrested on the test, right? I was, when no. you, you put that uh, <laughs> big streamer on and started fishing downstream? <laughs> I remember reading about that. Well, no, but if I ever get to the test, I'm sure I will be arrested. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I just, it just, I kind of like let my imagination go wild and Fairly often, I start catching fish. Yeah. But be careful. Don't go too crazy. Don't get arrested. Well, and it's, I guess that gets to the point. It's worth experimenting. When things are fussy, look around, observe carefully, but change your patterns, try different things. Don't keep doing the same thing if it's not working. Absolutely. So. Do you agree, Dave? Yeah. Well, I, I was going to say, if you, if you get into a litany of changing flies and none of them are working, check your tippet, check your position, yeah. make sure you're casting downstream yeah. to the fish showing the fly to them first, because very often you get into these litany of fly changes, it's not the fly pattern, it's, it's your rig or your presentation. Yeah, very, very good. Well, there you go, some things to do when you see fussy trout. Mm -hmm.